thousand reasons, as we have heard, to give thanks to the Lord. Even the life itself that we have right now. Not all the people have the opportunity to wake up today, to stand up, to sing praises. That's why consider yourself truly blessed. Amen? Upside down kingdom. I'm excited to deliver this message because it's timely. Happy Thanksgiving. As I mentioned, I hope and pray that you leave this place filled with thanksgiving in your heart when you leave this place. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Remember that throughout the ministry of Jesus, he primarily preached the gospel of the kingdom of God throughout his ministry more than anything else. Tandaan po natin yan. He preached the gospel of the kingdom of God more than anything else. How, that's how important it was during the ministry of Jesus' earthly ministry. So our main text, medyo muugong tayo, no? Our main text for this entire series is from Mark chapter 15. You still remember this. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Or repent and believe the good news in other translations. And we are now in our last installment, closing it. However, the message of the kingdom so as I mentioned, we are in our last installment. We, call it, uh, we would like to conclude this afternoon, the message about the upside-down kingdom. However, the message of the kingdom should not end today, okay? Because it will be the main focus of our life message. As an individual Christian and as a church, this will be our life message in this world. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then, the end will come. That's why we'll never stop preaching this message. And again, repeatedly you would notice this. We boldly put it in here. Repent, which is which means not only uh, repent for your sins, but repent, change your perspective, your mindset, your paradigm, your worldview, if you may, or your lens about your perspective in the kingdom. Okay? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, Holy Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. By the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, we approach your throne of grace and acknowledge your presence in our midst. Hear us, O Lord. Guard our heart. Help us to have the receptive heart as we re listen to your word, your living word. Do your ministry. You promise that your word will never return empty. You know right now, at this very moment, each person's heart and life, you know our past, you know our present, what occupies our mind right now, and you know our future. Lord, help me to deliver this word with boldness. Anoint me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Humble me, Lord. But I, I pray, Lord, that I could deliver it the way you want it to, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. That's why I'm excited, because for the benefit of those who missed the upside kingdom, for those who missed it, okay, you are blessed that you can still receive the summary of this gospel message or the upside-down kingdom. And for those who 
regularly, diligently following it, it's a refresher for you. It's a living word, so it won't return empty, as I mentioned. To put it simply, first, the kingdom, the king, and ambassadors. So I will just wrap it up, all the things that you heard about the message. To put it simply, it is a physical kingdom versus the spiritual kingdom. Visible versus invisible. And temporal versus eternal. Natatandaan po natin yan? And I just would like to highlight this one. In this world, the kingdom, the source is people. People giving taxes, services for the king and the kingdom workers to serve the kingdom. That is all over the world. That's the system. The king won't work. They won't work. The ambassadors doesn't have to work to earn. But the people give taxes, pay their dues and services so that the king and the kingdom workers could do their function. Whereas, in the upside-down kingdom, the king is the source. He supplies, he sustains everything for the kingdom workers to advance his kingdom. The main difference. Amen? Now, my question is, do you see this kingdom, this invisible kingdom, the eyes of your heart, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you could see it advancing. With regards to power and greatness, I combined some topics, so at least to give a quick summary of this. Okay? For the power and greatness, this world defined it. The power and greatness is defined by this world through physical and intellectual abilities. Using physical strength and intellectual abilities to overcome challenges, to succeed in life. Nakaka-relate ba tayo? We see people who are physically and intellectually good or they excelled on it, their abilities is really extraordinary. We see them as powerful, and great in the eyes of this world. Mga goat, greatest, greatest of all time. Familiar? Whereas in the upside down kingdom, it is defined, the power and greatness is defined by humility. By humility and meekness. The great humility of Jesus was exemplified most, demonstrated it clearly when he washed the dirty feet of his disciples, including Judas. That's the humility. Kung may bababa pang job, if there is a least job lesser than what he did, he would surely do it. Washing the dirty feet of his disciples. That's why he said, I gave you an example to imitate. While the greatest example of his power was clearly demonstrated at the cross. At the cross. Jesus conquered the power of sin and death. Ito yung nakakatawa dito. He conquered the power of sin and death with the joy set before Him. He endured it. He endured the cross knowing, believing, seeing that you and me will be saved through that act of obedience. Hallelujah. Let's give a clap of praise to the Lord. And imagine that that is the power while being persecuted, being rejected, mocked, his spat in his face, he never committed sin. 
Imagine that that's the power. He said, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they are doing. That's the most powerful expression of power and demonstration of his love for you and me. One of a kind. Amen? The question is, do you see the greatness and power as of this very moment? That's why it's very challenging. The upside-down kingdom is very challenging. As you listen to the kingdom, it challenges you. Should I believe it? Should I leave it out? Or I'll just ignore it. I'll follow what I think is right. That's your choice and your decision, our decision. Do you see greatness and power as how Jesus exemplified it? When it comes to peace, peace, according to this world, is straightforward. Everyone could relate. Absence of problems, absence of storms, absence of troubles, yung smooth sailing, okay? No conflict, calm. That's how we define, this world define it as peace. Whereas in upside down kingdom, peace is not the absence of the storm, but presence of God. Presence of God in the midst of the storm. Not the absence of problem, but the presence of God in the middle of the storm. Siya sabi ni Jesus, out of this world, it is not what the peace that this world gives. It only from Him and through Him that you could have this peace. Hallelujah. The good news is, it's not only one time that Jesus gave it. Because His word, He said, My peace I give you, and my peace I leave you. Napakaganda. I give you my peace and I will leave it to you. Hallelujah. In dwelling peace out of this world, the question, do you experience his peace in the middle of the storm? When you experience problem, do you feel bothered, hopeless, confused, anxious, and Jesus says, do not worry. It is the calmness that you experience in the middle of the storm that I would like many testimonies you could hear mo Many testimonies about this. And if you're not experiencing it, pray for it. Pray for it. Jesus is pleased to give you his peace. Or sometimes it's already in us, but we still ignore it. We choose to believe ourselves. That's why, like the battle, you would worry if the battle depends on you, right? But if you believe that the battle, like what we heard from the worship leading, the battle belongs to the Lord, it relieves you from worries kung matatalo ba, if you will be defeated or if you would fail because it is battle. I just follow you, Lord. How about security and blessedness? Security and blessedness. This world, you are secured when you have all that you need. You feel secured. And you feel blessed as well when your future and your family is secured financially. You feel that kind of peace of mind. 
And when you know that they are all healthy, physically, you have that kind of peace. Or when something happens to you, your family won't worry because you have this Alberta health. Or you're just worried about when to pagana confine, when to go out or discharge. I'm already naiinip. I'm already. What's that English? Ng naiinip? Bored in the hospital. Unlike in the Philippines. Even though you still would like to stay because you don't feel well, but because of the payment, <laughs> remove all this and then I won't stay for another day. Right? This is a different mindset. No peace when it comes to that. That's why sabi sa atin, bawal magkasakit. Right? But you can't avoid it. And when you know that you are living in a place where you don't need to worry about any flood, hurricane, or thieves, you have the sophisticated safety equipment or security, you are at peace. There's nothing wrong about all these things, good things that I mentioned. Nothing wrong. The only point is, because in upside-down kingdom, you have what you need spiritually. Without Christ, no matter how much sophisticated, no matter your security at home, no matter how much secured your job, no matter how much good your financial or your bank account, you are not truly secured and blessed. That's the truth in the upside down kingdom of God. Security and blessing can only be found in Christ. With love, I say it to you, I declare it to you, brothers and sisters. The question, where do you find your security in this life? Where do you anchor your security in life? I leave you that question. If you find it in Christ, you are truly blessed and secured. Amen? Can I hear amen there? If you find it in Christ, you are truly blessed and secured. When it comes to justice and forgiveness, this world will tell you that all wrongdoing should not be ignored and tolerated. Okay? We should be fair. We demand fairness. We demand justice from everyone. We demand justice from everyone except from ourselves. Isn't it true? When someone wronged us, we demand justice. But when we commit mistake or we are the one who did wrong, we justify it. We justify it. We have a list of excuses why we did it. I still remember when some people are late. Oh, they are late. Some people, they don't say it, but in deep in their heart, they're always late. And when they are late, they explained a lot. Oh, I'm late because the train just there, intersection. And you know what? I was and then it was about, and then I went back because I drove back because I forgot this, this, you know. But we explained it. Right? We justify it. We demand justice from everyone. And the same is true in his kingdom. In upside down kingdom, all wrongdoings have been paid for by Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Similarly, justice was demanded, but you and me 
are spared. God the Father did not spare His only Son. He did not spare His precious and only Son, the darling of heaven, without sin. He did not spare Jesus so that you and me will be forgiven and no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, do you trust the judgment of our God? Do you trust that justice that Jesus said, do not avenge? I will repay. Do you trust that? Or you think that if you ignore it, it will continue. So you want to fix it. But Jesus says, I will repay it. Do not avenge. Do you forgive as how Jesus forgave you? Do you forgive people the way you have been forgiven? Sabi natin, one is enough, two is too much, three is like a poison that kills a person. Tama na. Sobra na. And good thing, God, the Holy God, did not apply it to us. Good thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Through righteousness. How about this? Through righteousness. This world, doing what is right in the eyes of this world. As long as you do what is right, acceptable in the eyes of this world, you are righteous. Like helping people in need. Right? Walang ko kontra sa iyo Like people in need, like not doing any harm or not taking advantage of anybody. Or being tolerant and respectful to everyone. You will be righteous in the eyes of this world. Amen? Totoo ba yan? Have you met the people who's like this? A lot. Because this world believed this. But in upside down kingdom, we only do what is right in the eyes of God. Regardless of what this world would think, no one is righteous, not even one, the scripture declared. No one is righteous. Because righteousness in the eyes of God is what it is all about through righteousness. Like being clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. You know, when you were baptized in Gal Galatians 2, when you were baptized in Christ, you clothed yourself with Christ. It's like, a, that's why they call it a robe of righteousness. When you were baptized in Christ, you clothed yourselves with the righteousness of Jesus. Hallelujah. That is why baptism is so excited. If you see it that way, that's why it's like the baptism, when you see it that way, that you will clothe Jesus' righteousness, you won't think twice. It's a gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. Being righteous in the eyes of the Holy God is having the righteousness of Jesus in you. The question is the same. Are you righteous? Not in the eyes of this world, in the eyes of the Holy God. Are you righteous in the eyes of the Holy God? Have you clothed yourself with the righteousness of Jesus? Freedom. In this world, freedom is able to do and say what you want. Iba freedom? Teenagers, right? 
If you could do whatever you want, that's freedom. When can I drive? When I can do it on my own? I remember back then when we were teenagers and we were not allowed to watch movie by ourselves. My brother and I, we just do this. And then we just would like to have this uh, bigote. We put something there. And then the movie theater, when we pay, we like this. And then we didn't know there's a mirror there. The uh, tailor could see that we are standing like this. Just to pretend, to fake it, that we are matured. Right? Because we did not have the freedom to watch the movie that we would like to. Oh, man. At mga ano yun? Bad movie. <laughs> you are free to use all your time and energy in whatever you feel like doing in the upside down kingdom. You are able to do what God wants. You have the freedom to do what God wants you to do. And the thing is this, you joyfully doing the will of God this is the thing that you cannot fake. You know, back then when I was not, I had no relationship with the Lord, I was thinking about Gary Valenciano, shout for joy, sing and praise. I was thinking, he was just faking it. I didn't think that he was really joyful praising the Lord because he just would like to, because I could not relate to it. But I could see the joy in him but I was wondering why he had that kind of joy. He expressed it through dancing, his life, the way he talked, full of energy. That's why he called, what? Mr. Pure Energy. We have the freedom to live our divine purpose in life. With the motivation, this is the important thing. When you have this freedom, in Christ, your motivation to do good things changed when you were in the darkness, when you had no Christ yet. You just want to do good because you know it's the right thing to do. But now, you are doing it all for the glory of the name of God. Hallelujah. Before, I was doing it like, I just want to do because I, I knew it's the right thing to do, but I never point people to the Lord. Actually, I was waiting for them to thank me. Oy, kawan tumulong sa akin, ano? Yeah, you help me, right? Yeah. Just call my name and I'll be there. Uh, like a hero, no? But the thing is pride. But now, it's not me. All from God. Amen? The question is, are you doing what you want or what God wants? in your life today. That's why it's very challenging. The upside down kingdom is very challenging message. Are you doing, chasing what you want or what God wants in your life? Or do you find joy in doing what God designed for you to do? Or is your definition of freedom still the same? as this world? That's a question. Is your definition of freedom is still the definition of this world, but not this? How about surrender? In this world, surrender is synonymous to defeat, synonymous to weakness, and shame. Tama ba? Makahiyang sumuko. That's why we said uh, in Tagalog, ang sumusuko ay hindi nagwawagi. Pagka manunugal kami nun dati, kahit magkabaon-baon ka na sa utang, hindi ka makakabawi if you surrender. Do not surrender. No surrender. Because we saw it as a defeat, a weakness, and shame. But in upside down kingdom, it's interesting. Only in Christ that sin surrender is synonymous to victory. 
only in Christ. You could not find it in any other belief system. Only in Christ. That when you surrender, you won. Only in His kingdom, surrender is a guaranteed victory. Amen? Do you live a life surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Yung mga tanong na the questions that we all want to not to ignore after this, I don't want you to ignore these things. Wrestle with these questions and pray for it. And I hope that you find yourself surrendering so that you will have a victorious life from this day onwards. Amen? Who drives your life? Is it you or God? Living a surrendered life also is liberating as I mentioned. When you surrender it, that you know the battle belongs to the Lord, it is liberating. And surrendered life manifests in your daily decision making. People would notice it. Even your loved ones could see it, how you live your life. You cannot fake it. And choosing of leaders two weeks ago, right? In this world, this world look for outside appearance. Sa Philippines, mayroon pang ano yun, no? With pleasing personality. With height requirement, 5'5 five, five up. Grabe naman. Biro mo na walang ka ng trabaho, you had no job, just because of the things that you had no control. Imagine that. Skills, abilities, and track record. That's how the world choose leaders and workers. In upside-down kingdom, God looks into the heart. God looks into the heart. Pag magandang lalaki ka, sabi mo, unfair naman yan. Pag ka mag... <laughs> diba? And then... Look at the person beside you. Tell that person, God looks into your heart. God looks into your heart. And remember this, brothers and sisters. David was the least among his brothers. Right? All of his brothers were warriors. Physically fit, trained, and David was only a shepherd. But David, this is what I would like you to learn or to take away with you. David did not remain a shepherd. David did not remain a shepherd. Okay? He wrote Psalms. The uneducated fisherman did not remain uneducated. They became bold in proclaiming the gospel, even Peter wrote some of the New Testament. When you were called, that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians, remember when you were called, not many of you are rich, not many of you from rich fa or noble family, because God chose the foolish things of this world, the weak things, the lowly things, the despised things, to nullify the things that are not that are so that no one may boast. So that no one may boast. Hallelujah. That's one of my motivation. When I heard this one, when I was called in the ministry, I saw myself, I am not really qualified for this. And this passage, that's why it's one of my favorite passage. It's not what people would say. But God chose. For this world, I was full. Not qualified, but God qualified the call. Amen? Hallelujah. God will not call 
or will not choose the omniscient one. Alam mo yun, yung i-disciple mo, yung all-knowing. If you are an all-knowing person, God will not call you. Because God is looking for an empty vessel like David, like Peter, like these early Christians. The more it will be, the more it is empty, the more it will be filled with the grace of God, with the wisdom of God. That's why Paul says, He became your wisdom, which is your righteousness, holiness, and redemption. That's why boast in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. My question is, what is your criteria for leaders? Is it still disqualification or upside down kingdom? Very challenging, right? Imagine yourself, one of the early Christians, early followers of Jesus. You will make a declaration of God's kingdom. And then you will advance kingdom of God. And then when you look at your side, dating adulterer to, kilala to eh. O tax collector. Young people, no experience in scripture. No experience in the ministry. How could we make a difference proclaiming the kingdom of God? Have you imagined like putting yourself in that situation like group, that group? Most probably you will thinking that why did Jesus do this or choose this? Without thinking then, why you as well? <laughs> Not why did Jesus choose these people, but ask yourself, why me? They flourished because they followed Jesus. They have the best teacher in the world. They have the most amazing teacher, rabbi, with them. 24-7, three years in a row. Hallelujah. And with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they were reminded of all the things that they heard from Jesus Christ. Last week, Jesus' controversy. The world, even at this very moment, Jesus in this world is like just a prophet, a miracle worker, great teacher, but not God. Naniniwala ba tayo doon? Do we believe that? Do we see it? Do we encounter it? Do we experience it? We're in the upside down kingdom. He is our Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. Actually, it's not an accident that it was the last message delivered by Pastor Ramil Ayuno. Why? Because it's a great reminder for all of us this last message of Pastor Emil that we heard throughout this Upside Down Kingdom series point us all to Jesus. Amen? Jesus is our Lord and Savior to whom we surrendered our lives and He gives us forgiveness, peace, security, power, freedom, true righteousness, true blessing, treasure, name it. Does it deserve a clap of praise, of thanksgiving to the Lord? Isn't it enough to say that before we leave this place, Jesus gave me this. Take away all my sins. No more condemnation. Forgiven, I have this peace out of this world. I have the power, enablement through the Holy Spirit. I have this treasure. I have this righteousness. I have this blessed life. My question to you is personally, who is Jesus to you? Sino sa'yo ang Panginoon? 
Is he the Lord of all in your life? Or he is not a Lord at all? Remember that even the devil believed Jesus, but the devil does not trust and obey his word. Don't tell Jesus that I know you. I believe you. But the thing is, if you believe me, if you love me, you obey me. And Lordship of Jesus manifests in our life. Now what? Ano ngayon ang ano natin dito? What are we going to do now that we know about this? The summary of all this. Paglabas natin, when we go out of this, from this day, first, ask yourself, do you really believe that this upside-down kingdom is at hand? Is it really at hand in our midst or in the afterlife? Settle it in your heart. Because listen to Jesus' parable in Matthew chapter 13, 31 to 32. Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Imagine this as Jesus speaking to you. It is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree. So that the birds come and perch in its branches. Does it look like heaven to you? Planted on earth and it grows. Another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. First, it was man working, then now woman working on earth. The kingdom of heaven is at hand because heaven, heaven is already his kingdom remember the prayer hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven it is already ruling in heaven there is no need to plant in there it is in here it is so clear that Jesus inaugurated this kingdom from Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria to the ends of the world, Ponoka, Alberta, Philippines, Calgary, Edmonton, depende. But it reaches you and me. Amen? Let's give a clap of praise to the Lord. It doesn't only stop in you, but to your family, in your household in your workplace, in your community, in your friends and relatives. Now, this is so important, and we will close it with this. Even though you see it happening, yeah, Jerry, bro, I see it happening. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and now Christianity is all over the world. Yeah, I see it happening. But it won't transform your life. Tandaan po natin to. It won't transform your life unless you see the real value of it. And Jesus knows it. He knew it. That's why he said another, the follow-up parable. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Hallelujah. You know how Jesus would like to motivate them. They, Jesus knew that the people, our hearts, is constantly chasing the valuable things. 
And Jesus is saying in here, he's so genius. Jesus is a genius when it comes to this. If you don't see it enough, the value of it, Jesus give this example. To connect the people whose business is looking for pine pearls or hindi yung kagaya ng lupa, again, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for pine pearls. Sino ba mahilig sa alahas, di ba? We're looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. That's how Jesus compared the kingdom. The point is, his kingdom is worth more than you have in your lifetime. More than you accumulated through the years. More that you've been chasing all your life. That's the value of the kingdom. It is a life-changing experience, brothers and sisters, when you see how Jesus would like them to see the value of his kingdom. That's why he's calling. Repent, Jerry. Change your perspective. Change what you are chasing. Divert it. Even in your disciple making, it's not about how many disciples that you make, but how many disciples you could bring the knowledge of his kingdom. The disciple that you, the people that you disciple knows about the kingdom and living out the kingdom that Jesus preached. It's not the number of the congregation, even though it's a mega church, but ask them who are living in the kingdom, who believe and embrace the message of the kingdom. That's what Jesus is looking for. It's all about his kingdom. And we are called to live out that calling. Kingdom living is our calling. Can you see that picture? All of us here, when we spread with that mindset, how we live out our life, people would see the upside down kingdom. They could not understand it. You would look fool. But lo and behold, Jesus promised, I am with you. When they persecute you, when they falsely say all kinds of evil against you, Rejoice, because great is your reward in heaven. Hallelujah. Let's give a clap of praise to the Lord as we close it. Are you excited to live out your highest calling, kingdom living? God bless us all. Amen.